Hi there and a very warm welcome to this week's video in which we are going to look at lasers inside of Octane. So this has been requested by a surprising amount of people so I thought maybe this is the right time to tackle it in this video. So what we are going to do is to look at two different methods how to create laser in Octane with a bit of OSL scripting in the second method. So without further ado let's grab your coffee and let's keep going. Future Raphael here. While recording, I noticed that the first part of this video had enough information to fill a whole tutorial, so we are going to schedule the second part with the OSL script for next week. Okay, so let's have a look what we're going to do today, and as you know me, I'm efficient, I use the screen texture scene again. So the first method we are going to look at is rather a projection setup than a laser setup and it really depends on the texture used in your projector, whether it's looking like a cinema projection or a laser. And in the second method, the more nerdy method we are going to use the OSL script for, but also the more fake method we are going to use an intersection and a source to produce our laser's direction. Alrighty, so let's tackle the projection first. Actually, I got inspired by Cornelius Demrich to use this technique. He is an amazing artist and a good friend and used this to great effect in some of his works. So to begin, let's start the projection workflow from scratch by deleting the old projection light. Actually, this method is super simple. You just need a light source and a proper texture. So let's create the light source first. If you have my layout, which you can, by the way, download on my Patreon, you just have to click here. The other option is to go to lights and then go to octane area light. Here we go. What I want to do first is turn off the light visibility for the viewport so we have a better viewing experience. Then rotate it so the set axis is looking down as this is the lighting direction and then move the light up. So we are lighting our scene here. Now, if you think about it, a light is nothing else than a projector already, but all that we are projecting is just light, or in terms of textures, a uniform white color. Let's go into the light settings and talk about the base settings one more time. I know I mentioned this in the screen texture tutorial, but maybe there are some new people here who don't know. What I mainly want to talk about is the surface brightness, and how this changes the behavior of the light in the scene. So with surface brightness checked, if we change the size of the light, you can see the bigger the light, the brighter it gets, and also vice versa, the smaller the light, the dimmer it gets. This means that the power we set here is just pouring through the light unregulated. So if the light is bigger, then there's more power to spread. This obviously is different from the surface brightness ticked off. So if I compensate for the brightness real quick here, now the light's area is taken into account. So if we make the light source bigger, the light's intensity is staying the same. You can think about this way that the same wattage is applied to the light no matter its size. What I want to do for now is tick surface brightness back on, then set the power to 1 and then move our camera so we can see the actual light source here. And this should be white now, but it isn't. And the reason for this is that we haven't plugged in any texture yet. We could use a RGB spectrum or a float texture, but I want you to see something here to make some points. So instead, we are going to drag in a UV map. Here we go, and then connect it to the light. If we manage to do that. And since the light has UV coordinates, you can see that the map here is sticking to the light, as well as getting some colored lighting effects on the floor. Maybe we need to make it a little bit stronger in order to see that. Here we go. Although you're seeing colors on the floor, this is not a projection, at least not a sharp one. This is because every pixel is sticking to the light surface and distributing its energy in a 180 degree dome fashion. The reason why you're seeing colors is just that some pixels are closer to the floor than others or are shadowed by the screen. In order to make this light a workable projector, we need to make it a aperture or a pinhole. And this is where the distribution slot here comes in. 
Let's change the texture to a distribution and have a look at the light, what changes here actually. So maybe change the energy to be a little bit more visible, something like that. And then pipe the texture into the distribution. This makes our texture look vastly different. And if we use our camera to move, you can see that the light acts now as a portal into another texture dimension. And this is exactly what we need to make this light into a projector. Let me explain what's happening a little bit more in detail. So the pinhole here is actually our light and everything outside of the pinhole is simulated inside of the texture space of our light. So we are basically simulating an infinitely far away plane that we can look through our light and therefore we have the chance to create a projection through the light. So let's go back to 3D and set this up. Welcome back to 3D. So let's set this in motion by maybe increasing the power first. So let's go with 25 for example. And you can see this is a blurry mess and basically not very different from what we had before. But this doesn't mean it isn't working. It's just the way pinholes work. So the smaller the pinhole is, the sharper the projection will be. Okay, let's try this. But before we try, let's tick off surface brightness because lowering the size of the light means it gets weaker if we don't do that. And we want to keep the same strength of the light no matter its size. So let's tick it off and then compensate for the strength increase. And then before we make it completely small, let's go with a medium value here, like 100 times 100. And you can see the projection appearing, it's blurry. And what you also can see is that the aperture as the shape of the light is reflected in the bouquet of the projection. Now let's make it really small, like five times five millimeters. And you can see now we have a really sharp and pristine projection. What you probably have recognized is that our projection here is in polar coordinates. So this is mostly not what you want projecting a image. As you might have guessed, the obvious thing is the right thing to do. So let's go with a projection and set it to the projection. I always use XYZ to UVW. While this is way better than polar coordinates, this is still distorted as heck, as are actually most of the projections. So you can be creative and go wild. Welcome to the tangent to have another perspective to the pinhole versus projection topic. I copied our light into a different scene with a plane that has back face culling so we can see through it. And I want to point out two things here. My first point here is that if you make the light source a little bit bigger, you can exactly see what's projected by looking at it. So you can see the polar coordinates here that are coming out through the projection if we make the light source smaller. My point number two is about the pinhole effect. So basically with our camera right now underneath the surface, we see what every pixel would see. So with a big light, you can see a lot of the other side of the portal effect here. And this is also what every pixel is seeing, but with every pixel, all of those colors will be averaged into one color. And this is why we get this blurry mess. This is on the upside right now. So if we go and make our light source very small, then every pixel is just seeing a very distinct value on the other side. And therefore the result is a lot sharper. And this is, well, pinhole cameras explained in 3D space. Welcome back to our 3D scene and the distorted XYZ to UVW projection. If you want to have a non-distorted projection, there's only one setting that lets you do that. And this is the perspective here. So let's set it to perspective. And there we go. You might have noticed that we have tiling here and this is not what a projector is doing. So what we need to do is go to the image texture here and set it to black color on the borders. So we only see the tile that we are actually projecting in the middle. Now, if we move our light and rotate it, you can see that the projection is working as intended. The only thing you might want to change is that the projection here is very wide angle. To change that, you have guessed it, we need to go to the projection one more time and change the scaling. 
What doesn't work with the perspective scaling is if we have a unary value here for the scale. This keeps our texture just the same size. What you need to do is either scale X and Y, or as a trick, what you can do is change the scale in the set. So this makes the projection larger and smaller. So what you can do to get more parallel lines is make the projection really small and then move the projector further back. So we gain the same size as before. And now the projection is much more straight. Of course, also we need to power up the light because the further away the darker it gets. We are already at the last couple of steps. So to make this appearance more laser-like, obviously we're going to exchange the texture here. So I animated some lines in After Effects and drag that in here. And then this is obviously also an animation. So let's go and calculate that. And actually it's displaying the same thing that is already displaying on the display of the computer. Now let's mimic a laser that is only occupying one wavelength of the visible spectrum of a light, at least in our case. So let's go with an RGB spectrum and set it to a red color. If you want to be physically accurate, you should be 100, but sometimes this can lead to problems with our renderer. So what I usually do is creep in some little bit of green and blue, although it's not physically accurate how a laser would behave. All right, almost done. Let's get in some final touches. For one, this sequence here is 16 by nine. So what we need to do is go to projection and set the Y scale to 0.56. Here we go. And then as a last little tweak, I want to make the light source even brighter. So let's see how 100 was working. Maybe this is good. So let's see it from the camera's perspective. And this is looking pretty nice. Maybe even though a little bit brighter, 150, you can play with it and see what works best for you. And now if we step through the animation, you can see that we are getting some nice projections on our screen as we had in the preview video. By the way, if you want to get your hands on this nice little sequence I animated, you can get a hold of it and download it in the description down below. As I mentioned in the beginning, there's actually a second way to do lasers in Octane, but this would have made this video too long, so I opted to split it off into an extra video. Let me know if you're interested to see that next week, for example, in the comments below. Also, if you want to lay your hands on this nice screen model you can see here right now, this is available on my Patreon if you become a member there, no matter what tier. Speaking of Patreon, let's thank those who made this video possible, my Patreons. Especially my 50 Euro tier subscribers, Chiels Augustinen, Just a Frickin, and Leon Studio TV. Also, of course, a huge thank you for my 15 Euro tier subscribers, for the Thieves, Render King, Alessandro Bonchio, Alessio De Vecchi, Alihan Gekkefa, BVR, Chris Fritschi, Christian Grajewski, DBMD, Erbe Plus Academy, George Luna, Graham Bagnell, Harish Pavaskar, Joel Mackemer, John Edward, Ludger, Muratan Axos, Nico Straub, Part 1 of 2, Quok an Dang, Random Capibara, Raiko, Renato Marquez, Reshock, Shiro2049, Terry Wayne Ranson, and Yasin Rupp. Thank you all so very much for making it possible to produce those videos that you all enjoy. Welcome to the laser show everyone and thank you so much for sticking with me and watching this long. This not only satisfies the algorithm but also makes me incredibly happy. Thank you. I think the workflow shown here has a lot of potential not only for lasers but for all sorts of things. If you create something cool with it I'm eager to see it so please share. If you want to show your support post a 8 spoked asterisk in the comments down below. I needed 10 tries to get this right.
And now, without further ado, I wish you a great rest of the weekend, a amazing start into next week and a good time. Ist ja voll laser, wie du abgehst. Bye.